What's up guys, this is Jules, and this is gonna be my Magic and Nightblade gank build for the Homestead patch in ESO. So just to kick it off, this is gonna be a High Elf Nightblade. We are a Vampire for the Undeath and the Stealth passives. We're running Shadow for increased crit damage, max health and max Magicka food. And we're running Essence of Detection. This is increases our Stealth Detection and also gives us Major Sorcery and a little bit of Magicka back. So just to take a look at the stats, we have 43k max Magicka, 26.6k health and 10k stam. Our Magicka recovery sits at 930. Spell damage completely unbuffed is at 2418 and spell crit 45.9%. So just to buff up real quickly. As you can see, this increases our spell damage significantly. Now it's at 3972. This is just under 4k spell damage, so that's really good. And that's pretty much it for the stats, guys. So now we're going to go into gear. We're running 5 Clever Alchemist. 5 Elegant, 1 Kenna, and 1 Maelstrom Sharpened Inferno. We have Clever on the body, 4 pieces on the body, and 1 Resto. This gives us max health, max health, spell damage, and then increases our spell damage by 638 when we drink a pot. This does still work on your off bar. So you pop a pot on your Resto, and you switch to your Destro that does carry over. You can do all your damage on your Destro. The other pieces that we are wearing are Elegant. Two pieces on the body and three jewelry. Our jewelry is enchanted with all spell damage and is all arcane. And then our two pieces are divines as well as the clever alchemist divines as well. The last piece of armor is our medium armor Molag Kenna arm cops. This gives us 124 spell damage. And then the final piece is a maelstrom sharpened inferno. This gives us another 189 spell damage. It's important to remember two things about the gear. Make sure that all of your gear is divines if possible. This is crafted, so that shouldn't be too difficult. The elegant is fairly inexpensive for armor, so that shouldn't be difficult either. Make sure that these are all arcane. And the divine's shoulder, um, this might be a pain in the butt to get. If you don't have divines, then you can do something else. But remember that divines is going to be best in slot for this build. Also remember that you should be uh, wearing 511. As you can see, I have one heavy and one medium here. The rest are light. The reason that you want to do this is for the Undaunted passive. This gives us 6% to all max stats if we're wearing three different armor types. So now we're just going to get into the skills, guys. On our front bar, on our Destro, we have Swallow Soul, Inner Light, Shadowy Disguise, Concealed Weapon, Impale, and Soul Harvest. Swallow Soul is going to be a DPS ability. This is not going to be your main DPS ability. This is only going to be if you're stuck in a crappy situation and you're out of stealth and you can't instantly gank somebody. This is going to be used to do some DPS to them. Inner Light buffs our Max Magicka and also gives us Major Prophecy, increasing our spell crit by 2191. Shadowy Disguise is going to be one of our defensive abilities. This is also known as Cloak. We're using this morph because it's going to ensure that our next critical, that our next attack is going to be a critical strike. Concealed Weapon, we will not be using this skill. This is just to buff the movement speed. Impale is our Execute. And Soul Harvest is our Ultimate. Soul Harvest hits pretty hard. It's pretty cheap. It's still at, at 70. It uh, recently got increased from 50. And then any time that you kill an enemy, you're going to gain 10 Ultimate. So between the gains from Soul Harvest and also the gains from Pot and um, the Cyrodiil passives, you should be able to get this Ultimate up fairly quickly. This is a heavy attack build for the most part. The combo is going to be a heavy attack into a soul harvest and if they have a lot of health with an impale as well. Off bar we're looking at healing ward, merciless resolve, fear, prolonged suffering or agony, double take, and soul tether. This bar is going to primarily be our buff bar. This is our Clever Alchemist bar anyway. The Healing Ward is just obviously going to be our heal and our shield. This keeps us from getting crit upon if it's up. Merciless Resolve. This gives us 8% extra damage or minor berserk. Mass Hysteria, also known as Fear. This is going to be only in uh, situations where you need to fear to get people off of you. This cannot... This can also be replaced by something like uh, Purge or anything like that. It's uh, kind of a flex spot. Depends on your play style. Prolonged Suffering or Agony. This is also a flex spot. 
This is used for horse ganks or keeping somebody on a horse and then um, ganking them before they can react. Um, double take, this is just going to be our major expedition and also our dodge chance. And then soul tether, this is going to be used exclusively when you have a lot of people on you. This will give you a, a little bit of a decent heal and hopefully give you a chance to get away. So the combo guys, just so you're aware, you're going to buff up on your resto bar. Make sure that you have merciless resolve up, double take. You pop your pot, this is your resto bar, so this is your clever alchemist bar. Switch bars, you're going to proc inner light so that you can get the, uh, the might of the guild passive, which is an empower. You're going to charge up a destro heavy attack, immediately cloak afterwards to ensure that that heavy attack is a crit. And then Annie cancel a soul harvest and an impale for good measure if they have a lot of health or a lot of resistances. You can see this combo. I will link a clip from my Twitch where I am ganking Bouncy. Um, it's an instant kill. He is a tanky Templar. He has, I believe, around 26k resistances. He's standing in his um, restoring focus, or his channeled focus, rather. Um, and this is going to be just an average player that you're looking to gank. Um, he has about, I think, 25k max health. So that is the entire combo and all of the skills. Let's just hop into CP. We have 40 into Elfborn, 80 into Ellie Expert, 80 into Staff Expert, 30 into Resistant, 60 into Hardy, 60 into Ellie Defender, 50 into Bastion, 100 into Magician, 60 into Arcanist, and 40 into Tumbling. So that is much, pretty much the entire build, guys. I hope that you enjoyed this. I'm not going to say that uh, ganking is balanced or that it takes a lot of skill. Um, you know, it can in, in certain respects, in, in respects to getting away and things of that nature. Please don't use this build to XV1 people. If you are going to be ganking, please do it one-on-one -on -one and don't be attacking people that you know, already have people on them. That's just not a cool way to play. Uh, a couple things to keep in mind with the gank builds. Uh, you cannot stay in stealth on a Magicka Nightblade with only 10k max stam. I learned that the hard way, uh, trying to play it like my stamina ganker. It's just not going to happen. You're going to get yourself into a situation where you just don't have enough stam to CC break and you're going to get killed. So you do need to permacloak with this build. And then the other thing is make sure that you are tab targeted onto your target and also looking at them. I did experience a couple of different times where I both tab targeted and was looking at the person and my Destro heavy attack went to just someone else that I was not trying to attack at all. So um, just keep in mind that does happen. I'm not sure if it's a bug with the Destro, but just make sure that in order to try to eliminate that, you are tab targeted onto your target and you are looking at them and maybe, you know, make sure that they're kind of away from other people or things like that. So that's the entire build, guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions, you can hit me up on Twitter or Twitch. And have a great day.